Hey, what's up guys? This is the Eero Pro 6 and I'm going to do a long-term review on this. I've had it for over a year and I've been using it on and off for about four months or so. The reason for that is because I'm continuously testing different mesh Wi-Fi's and routers. So, the Eero Pro 6 is a tri-band mesh Wi-Fi 6 system. So, breaking that down real quick, a tri-band system typically has, not typically, it does have three bands so a 2.4 gigahertz and two 5 gigahertz bands, whereas a dual band system has two bands, a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz. So the difference between a dual band and a tri band is that you get an additional band with the tri band and that allows you to connect more Wi-Fi devices without as much congestion, aka without as much slowdown. And, or I should say, on wireless backhaul, which when these are when these two are talking to each other wirelessly, typically on the secondary one, there is going to be a, some slowdown in the, in the case that they're wirelessly talking to each other. However, for tri-band systems, typically that slowdown is less because there's an additional frequency that's either dedicated or is used in conjunction with the other frequencies to talk to the main one. So, in a nutshell, a tri-band system will allow for more Wi-Fi devices to connect or it won't slow down as much on the secondary nodes that are connected wirelessly. Okay, so this Eero system has two Ethernet ports and they are auto-sensing. So what does that mean? That means that you can pick either or to connect to your modem and the other one you could connect to this guy to create a wired backhaul or you can hook it up to a switch to expand your ethernet port or you can hook this up directly to your computer or your xbox or whatever unit you need and there it's powered via USB-C it does come with the power cord and it's again USB-C so that's the Euro Pro 6 in a nutshell it also has a built-in smart home hub which is the Zigbee so I personally don't use that but you can use that some smart home devices require that and this can actually act as that hub. Okay, so I did internet speed test. I also did local area speed test servers to help isolate the router, and I also did new range tests. So I have several other videos on the Aero Pro 6, but this is a newer one where I actually did all new speed tests. Um, I also have faster internet now, and I've also moved so I can get, I can easily get more range now because there's less interference. Okay, so starting off with the speed test, I use speedtest.net and my internet, my current internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So no matter how fast your routers or mesh Wi-Fi's are, if you're accessing the internet, you're limited by your internet speeds. So those, those are the max speeds that I can get with my internet. So with my computer that's hooked up via Ethernet to this or to a switch that's hooked up to this, I can pretty much get those speeds almost consistently. However, with the Wi-Fi devices, with my Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device, and my iPhone 12 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, there is going to be some speed drop because it's going over wireless. So using speedtest.net with my iPhone 12 Pro, I got 571 down and 331 up, and all the speeds I say are gonna be in megabits per second, not to be confused by megabytes per second. So one byte is equal to eight bits. That's the conversion rate. With the Pixel 5, which is the Wi-Fi 5 device, I got 461 down and 345 up. So now getting into the local area speed test server, that's when I take away my internet service provider and the public speed test server, and I'm really just isolating the router itself. And the reason for that is because my internet service provider is not always going to give me the speeds that they're advertising, and the public speed test server is being requested, is actually being used by a lot of people or companies, uh, pretty much can be at the same time as well. So it's not always consistently going to give me accurate speeds. So by making my computer my speed test server, I essentially go from my Wi-Fi device to the router, to my computer, isolating the router, and that's going to give me much better speeds. I'm also testing out the max capabilities of the system 
because this thing can go faster than the router. My speed test server can support faster speeds than this, I should say. Okay, so to be consistent with all my other Mesh Wi-Fi videos, I'm going to go with the same option numbering scheme that I use. So option one is when you use a router by itself. So just because this is a Mesh Wi-Fi system doesn't actually mean you need to get more than one. You could just get one of these and it's just a router, just as if you were to get a regular router. So, and again, if you need more Ethernet ports, just hook up the secondary one to a unmanaged switch and you can expand your Ethernet ports and the router will do everything for you. It's as long as you get an unmanaged switch. Okay, it's, it's as simple as plug and play. And if you guys wanna know how to connect this stuff, I've done a separate video on this where I literally show you by demonstrating how to plug stuff in. I have a modem, I have switches, I have all these Ethernet cables. I'm showing you guys how to connect all, this, all of this stuff. I'll put a link for that in the description below. Also put links for the Aero Pro 6 as well. So option one with the Wi-Fi 6 device, I get 962 down and 662 up. So you can see there's a dramatic increase in speed. And with the Wi-Fi 5 device, I still get pretty good speeds at 713 down, 552 up. Skipping option two, because option two is when I hook up a router to a dedicated non-router device. But in this case, these are technically both routers. However, when I connect them in the same network, the secondary one acts as an extender, even though physically it is a router. So option three is called wired backhaul. So wired backhaul is when you connect the secondary one to the main one via ethernet. Now this can be through a switch or it can be hardwired directly. So as long as there's an ethernet making its way from one to the other, and this essentially gets the same speeds as option number one, which is what I would expect. And option number four, this is called wireless backhaul. So wireless backhaul is when one is hooked up to your modem and then the other one is just, let's just say one or two rooms away, just connected to the power. And this one will automatically wirelessly connect from this guy to this guy and again, expand your Wi-Fi network because that's what a mesh Wi-Fi does. Long story short, tri-band systems are better when you're doing wireless backhaul. I got 490 down with the iPhone 12 Pro and 643 up, and with the Pixel 5 Wi-Fi 5 device, I got 388 down, 581 up. When I do these speeds, I'm connecting to this secondary one, and that's what I'm doing the speed test on, because on the primary one, you're always gonna get those full speeds because there is an ethernet connection from one to the other. And again, a mesh Wi-Fi system, when I take my Wi-Fi device, I'm walking throughout my home, it automatically switches from one to the other when it detects it's closer to one versus the other. This is something that you don't have to worry about. You connect to your Wi-Fi name or your SSID and it does everything for you. And the Eero Pro 6 is a solid mesh Wi-Fi system. I really like it. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna talk about range tests. Now range will vary based on the, your location. So my last location, there was a lot more interference, more walls, more wireless routers and stuff around. So I typically got less range. Over here, I get much more range because there's a lot less interference. So if you're in a place on multiple floors, if you have basements, if you have thick walls, or if you're in a building with other routers around and stuff, all of that stuff is gonna hurt your range. So in my case, 20 feet away, I'm still inside my place and I get very good speeds. At 50 feet, I go outside my place and there are some stucco walls and stuff. So there's some interference there. So there's gonna be a speed drop there. You could see the speed start to decrease and it goes all the way up to 180 feet, which is quite impressive. I can go anywhere near my place, even outside my place, and I will still get pretty good Wi-Fi coverage. Now the Eero app is, I would say, a pretty clean interface. You do set up everything on the phone, on the app. Both uh, Android and iOS have the app. I have no issues, it automatically updates and stuff. But with the Eero, there's something called the Eero Secure and the Eero Secure Plus, which gives you more uh, security features and more content filtering and more ad blocking and stuff, or I should just say ad blocking if you get a subscription. So I don't have the subscription. I personally don't need the subscription because I have other protections on my computer. So, but if you wanted to get that, they do offer that on this. What do I think about this system? Well, 
I honestly really like the Aero Pro 6. In the four or, months, four or so months that I've used it, it's always been a solid choice. I've never had an issue. It automatically updates. I have had no issues with smart home stuff connecting to it, even the 2.4 gigahertz stuff connecting to it. Zero issues whatsoever. There has been no drops in connections, no abnormalities. Everything's just been solid. The one thing I will say is it does run a little bit warm, but that's typically the case for most mesh Wi-Fi and routers that I test. Anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment sections below. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.